At over 3 million square miles, the Amazon rainforest is mind-bogglingly huge. To compare, the entire United States measures only 3.7 million square miles, meaning one of the largest countries on the planet is only a bit bigger than the Amazon. But unlike the US, the Amazon is shrouded in uncharted forestry and biological mystery. It seems we're discovering new things about the Amazon all the time, and most of what we find isn't at all normal. Here now are the 10 most bizarre things ever found in the Amazon rainforest. Everyone loves a good soak in the hot tub, right? But what if the tub was so hot, climbing in could literally kill you? That doesn't sound too relaxing, and yet there is a river in the Amazon that's exactly that. Located in Peru, the Chene Tempishka River, also known as the Boiling River, is a four-mile-long body of water that, true to its name, is so hot it actually boils. At its coolest, the river is 45 degrees Celsius, or around 113 degrees Fahrenheit. More often, however, the water heats up to a skin-melting 100 degrees Celsius, or 212 degrees Fahrenheit. At that point, the water starts to boil, and if you're in there, don't expect to come out happy and healthy. If you stick your hand in the 212 degree water, you can expect life-threatening third-degree burns in a matter of seconds. If you foolishly dive in, you could die in under a minute, the boiling water cooking you like a plate of pasta. You're probably wondering why the boiling river, well, boils. It can't just be because Peru is warm, right? Not at all. Geothermal scientist Andres Russo, who discovered the river in 2011, says that fault-fed hot springs are to thank. Basically, hot water from inside the earth travels through her cracks and faults, finally reaching the surface and helping to create a river almost twice as hot as that cup of coffee you had to blow on this morning. Chances are at least some of you watching this are afraid of snakes. Well, we're here to alleviate that fear. Except, no, we're not. Hailing from the Amazon rainforest, meet the green anaconda. This is, by virtually any standard, the largest snake in the world. This mammoth can grow anywhere from 20 to 30 feet long and weigh upwards of 550 pounds. Some snakes, like the reticulated python, may be a tad longer than the green anaconda, but Greeny's sheer mass earns it the title of Oh God, Run Away Now champion of the snake world. This anaconda kills by squeezing the life out of its prey and then swallowing it whole. There seems to be little to no limit on what this snake can swallow either. It's known to eat large creatures like wild pigs, deer, capybara, and even jaguars. The green anaconda is so elusive and scary, we legitimately don't know how many there are. The IUCN list of endangered species lists their status as a question mark. It seems scientists value their lives too much to even bother counting these eating machines, and we can't say we blame them. You know those odd carvings seen around the world that are usually only visible from up high? The Nazca Lines in Peru, the Uffington White Horse in England? These are examples of geoglyphs. Nobody knows where these designs came from. They're usually difficult to detect from the ground. Some people think aliens put them there, and it turns out the Amazon is loaded with them. Thus far, we've discovered around 300 of them, and virtually none would have been found without such tech. They're nearly impossible to notice at ground level, since they're mostly made by cutting some grass thinner than others. Plus, at nearly a square mile each, there'd be no way to even realize what you're in the presence of, since it would take so long to travel from each end to another one. As to why they exist, we have no idea. Our best guess is that an ancient civilization put them there. But how and why are the unanswered questions. Then again, they had no internet or Nintendo back then. Mowing miles of lawn to hopefully match the strange patterns in your head might have been the only entertainment they had. Few things are more unsettling than seeing the insides of an animal's body. It's why dissecting a frog is one of the hardest parts of high school for many a squeamish student. Well, what if we told you there's a species of frog who doesn't need dissecting, because you can see its insides while it's still alive? We're not sure if that'd be better or worse for your stomach, but it's certainly interesting. The glass frog, a native of the Amazon rainforest, has transparent skin around their abdominal area. This means that if you look at one, you can see everything heart, lungs, guts, intestines, liver, and even arteries. This little hopper is a living, breathing biology lesson. Unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you look at things, the green parts of their skin are less translucent. So if you were hoping to see a live frog's brain, you're out of luck. Back to the dissection table for you. Very little is known about the glass frog. We're not sure exactly what they eat, how they survive, or what evolutionary advantage transparent skin provides. We do know, however, that native people love the glass frog so much, Colombia put one on the back of their 500 peso coin. If only other countries did that with their native oddities. Forget George Washington. Let's see a quarter featuring the star-nosed mole. 
Sometimes scientists that name animals get right to the point, providing names that explain exactly what the animal is and what they do. Such is the case with the Goliath bird eater, which is indeed Goliath and which indeed eats birds. Oh, and it's a giant spider, which we imagine is a shock to precisely none of you. The Goliath bird eater is the largest spider on Earth. It weighs nearly half a pound, and its leg span is nearly a foot long. The way they eat their prey, birds or otherwise, is downright horrifying. Since it can't chew solid food, it instead stabs its prey with inch-long fangs filled with toxins. This paralyzes the spider's dinner and actually liquefies its insides. Once this ghastly cooking process is complete, the bird eater is free to suck up the liquid innards like a delicious nightmare smoothie. Don't worry, it won't do this to you. Goliath bird eater's toxins are mostly harmless to humans, and the worst that will happen is you'll feel like a wasp stung you. That's certainly not a good feeling, but it's infinitely more preferable to having your internal organs melted into soup for Pennywise's drinking pleasure. For the most part, ants aren't anything spectacular. We see them all the time, and we know that they can effortlessly carry many times its body weight. It's kind of difficult for them to surprise us anymore, unless they're the bullet ant, an Amazonian wonder that will make you want to stay far away from the rainforest at all times. These creatures are called bullet ants for two reasons. For one thing, they're about as large as a bullet. Unlike the tiny black ants that invite themselves to your every picnic, a bullet ant can grow up to two centimeters or larger. That alone makes them plenty scary. But then there's the second reason. These ants can bite. But unlike the durable and short-lived pain of a red ant's bite, a bullet ant's bite hurts. It's been compared to the pain one feels when shot by a bullet. And if we were you, we'd take people at their word here and not track down a bullet ant to find out. The pain is so great, it's earned a unique spot on the Schmidt Sting Pain Index. This index ranks insect stings on a pain scale of 0 to 4. If a sting doesn't hurt at all, it gets a 0. A sting from a honeybee is ranked 2. Not only is this bullet ant sting ranked a 4, it actually gets a 4 plus. You do not want to approach this ant. The only saving grace is that the bullet ant can't kill you. It's not toxic, and an average sized human would need to be stung over 2200 times before dying. It's like Monty Python taught us. Always look on the bright side of life. Technically, this little miracle is called the Green Basilisk Lizard, but once you learn its amazingly bizarre talent, you'll never call it by any other name but the Jesus Christ Lizard. In most instances, the Jesus Lizard is a normal Amazon lizard. It's about two feet long, lives in the trees, it's somewhere in the middle of the food chain, and it will never turn down a mouth-watering dinner of plants and bugs. Its claim to fame comes when threatened. If it feels it needs to bolt from a potential predator, it will literally run across the water to safety. Yes, much like Jesus in his famous walking on water feet, the Christ Lizard has little issue with making the water's surface its own personal sprinting track. It manages this not through divine intervention, but through evolution. The Jesus Lizard has extra long toes on its rear feet. Each toe has extra skin that flaps in the water and creates extra surface area. By rapidly propelling its feet like Scooby and Shaggy running away from a ghost, the Jesus Lizard creates a series of air pockets that actually keep them above water. While the Bible implies Jesus could have walked on water all day if he chose to, the Jesus Lizard can only do so for about 50 feet before gravity comes to its senses and decides it's time to go swimming. Plus, if the lizard gets lazy about running fast, down into the drink it goes. Luckily, the Jesus Lizard is a good swimmer. But since this video isn't about good swimmers, it's just best we move on. When you think of a tree, certain things come to mind, namely one trunk. Then there's the walking palm tree, which looks so unlike a tree, it's developed a mythology all its own. The trunk of the walking palm tree splits into dozens of roots on its journey to the ground. This, to certain people, makes it look as if the tree has more legs than a spider. That, plus locals insisting the tree walks thanks to shaded roots dying off and new ones taking root toward the sun, has given the walking palm tree an incredible reputation. A moving tree forever transfixed by sunlight? If that isn't the coolest story ever, what is? Sadly, that's all it is. A story. As awesome as this tree looks, its reputation is pure myth. This tree does not actually walk, nor do its roots seek out the sun. Barring a super cyclone, the walking palm tree lives and dies in the exact same spot it was born in. As bizarre as the walking palm tree is, it won't provide you the walking trees you want in your life. For that, The Legend of Zelda's Great Deku Tree, The Ents from Lord of the Rings, and Good Old Groot are your only hopes. Once again, fiction saves the day. At first glance, the Jabuticaba may seem downright sickly. After all, it's covered in large, dark lumps that could very well be tree tumors, which are a thing should you wish to be further disgusted today. But luckily for the Jabuticaba, these lumps are not bad things at all. In fact, they're super fruits. This tree is covered in large, grape-like fruits that are completely safe to pick and eat. 
While other trees obviously bear fruit, no other tree covers their entire trunk with them like a full-body tattoo enthusiast. Surprisingly, there's an evolutionary explanation for the fruit. The Jabuticaba wants to feed animals who can't climb trees to eat its fruit too. Along with the fruit are some of the most beautiful tree flowers you'll ever see. Twice a year, the Jabuticaba grows the plants bearing the tasty fruit, meaning its trunks are covered in gorgeous white fuzz that honestly looks cozy enough to sleep on. If only this tree could survive in cooler climates, because we need them in every backyard. Of all the living creatures in the Amazon, humans are not likely what comes to your mind. But the rainforest is filled with indigenous tribes that modern society either forgot about or actively tried to kill. Hundreds of years ago, the Amazon was teeming with people from tens of thousands of different tribes. Sadly, since the advent of colonialism, many of these tribes have been wiped out or severely diminished. Even still, thousands of different tribes remain, intent on living as their ancestors had long before Europeans paid a visit. These indigenous people largely live what's called a sustainable existence, which means they get everything they need to live from the rainforest, but make sure not to harm it in the process. In most cases, they live and learn as their ancestors did, having no real interest in joining the modern world. Unfortunately, the modern world largely wants them to join or die. Because the tribal people have no deeds or paperwork saying they own the rainforest, they're constantly subject to corporations, politicians, and business people attempting to raise the rainforest for themselves. Many indigenous people feel the recent Amazon fires, which are still ongoing as of this video, are intentionally set by South American leaders who want the land for themselves and their country's various businesses. Never mind translucent frogs, boiling rivers, or humongous anacondas. That kind of selfish, destructive, money-first attitude is the most bizarre thing of all. 